North heading to province and playing in the in the Pro D2 basically gives you an understanding of you know the, the you know how how lucrative and and how fine the professional setup is in France and you know it gives you an idea of sort of you know how attractive it is to anybody around the world. So and, and some of the teams down in the in the lower divisions they've conquered France. You know, likes of Beer, it's Simon Mannix coaching down there at the moment. You've got Dax, you've got all of these you know Colombia. These are all teams that have conquered France. You know, yesteryear. So you know, it's fantastic. The depth is there. The quality and the teams that we've actually got, you know, running right down to Federal One, Federal Two, is, is exceptional. And tonight we've got 44,000 fans in a sellout crowd here at the Matmut Atlantic Stadium down in Bordeaux. Yeah, well, and they're doing it well. They're not cannibalising their own sport and their own supporters. Pro D2 now has one game on a Thursday night and the rest of the game's on a Friday night. Then Top 14 kicks in on a Saturday and a one, you know, one game that we're about to see on a Sunday. They're avoiding a head-to-head -head clash with football, so the, the kickoffs at nine o'clock as well. And it's just, you know, smart, smart move. Get the viewers at home, get all the kids off to bed, the younger ones anyway, and uh, and turn the telly on and watch some quality rugby. There he is, Mr. Adrian Marbo, the man in charge. Well, I think that you know we've got a, we'll have quite a few Toulouse fans down here tonight. But uh, just look at these, you know, the it's. You, you've, you've got world-class players on the pitch tonight, and uh, Mathieu Jalabert, you know, it was it's pretty impressive. He's got strapping around that knee where he, um, where he had ligament damage playing against Italy five weeks ago. We thought he wouldn't be back for another few weeks. He's back in the fold, and he gets this clash underway. Round 19 encounter, Union Bordeaux bagel up against Toulouse, and the ball picked up by that big man, Willis, who's having an absolute... Um, Wonderful time down in uh, on the banks of the Garonne. Grau getting the ball back to Ramos, hoofs the ball heavily into touch. Roman Buros, probably the only player in the back line. He is the only player in the back line who we don't actually uh, <laughs> really recognise because uh, of the fact that. Um, you know, he's, he doesn't put on the blue shirts, come Six Nations or come Rugby World Cup. We do have one change, of course, where um, Biarre was, um, had a little bit of a, a problem. So we do have Pablo Uberti, who's coming and, uh, at 11. Here we go, Union Bordeaux Bagel on the attack, nicely done. And a little bit of a whiz kid action already right from the start. There's Labelle who picks the ball up, he's been tackled. And there we have the Jackalers are down, trying to rip the ball and make it theirs. Look who does the business, gets the ball out. They, if they get the ball out, there's, there's a, an option out wide. Now, let's see if the speed can go. Mofano on the outside, going around. Can he get over? Yes, he can. We're one minute and 15 seconds in. And look at that. Joram Moafana scoring a try in the corner. Quite extraordinary. That's the kind of start that we love. What an exhilarating start from Bordeaux. And plenty of work to do from Moifana. He had a long way to go to the try line. He had an international defender, fullback defender, no less, coming across in Tomaramo. And they've really got on the front foot well there, getting the ball in behind to lose, putting the pressure on early. Game of territory. And the turnover, they've made this opportunity count. And a great start for Bordeaux in front of their adoring home fans. Wasn't perfect, but there was plenty of space out there. And Watch here, Ramo probably couldn't have done a heck of a lot more. He's up against a big, strong guy with good acceleration and a good fend, and he's used absolutely everything there. Moifana, all the skills he's brought to play there to get across the line, chops in at the last moment. Try time. What a sensational start and uh, the ideal way we talked about wanting to please the world. Well, I think that that's already lightning start and Luku will get the chance to try and add the extras from out wide. He's got a pretty good boot on him, but he doesn't manage to get the direction. Very high, but uh, wide of the sticks. It's five points for UBB and uh, Yannick Brew, uh, happy man for the moment. He used to... Uh, Used to pack down with the likes of um, William Servat and Co. Of course, uh, at Toulouse, very familiar with the setup. Hugo Mola will say, "Okay, well, that's all right. We've basically got a pretty good understanding of how things will function tonight." The restart, picked up by Uberti. Very strong, very agile runner, quick acceleration. Runs into the Toulouse defence, gains an extra couple of metres. And Luca will try and clear this. Let's have a look how the exit is. 
sails high. Picked up at the back, Juan Cruz Malia. Front row is doing the business there with uh, Boniface, but they've uh, stolen the ball once again. There's the kick through, and it's a dangerous one. Dip Porter down into the corner and just pushing and pegging Toulouse way back into their uh, backyard. And it will be a line out for Toulouse. Oh my word, look at this. It's already time to see Antoine Dupont. This is quite extraordinary. Three minutes. 50 and Dupont ready to make his entrance. <laughs> Look at the smile on Hugo Mola's face. And this is because of the, the Roman, uh, the Thomas Ramos uh, injury. So he'll play outside half. Or will he? Would you well, put, he, you he put Grau? For Toulouse, yeah. didn't he, Robbie? And he was, he was pretty good on the front foot all day, but he's a talented player. He's got great vision. Uh, not great news, obviously, for Toulouse with Ramon, but the, the ability to have a play like this to come on. Plenty of energy. I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how he lasts the 80 minutes in 15s, given his fitness profile at the moment playing sevens. Oh, honestly, I mean, you know, do we, should we worry about Antoine Dupont? He comes from a different planet. I mean, it's remarkable. And you, know, you do as well, but I mean, you know, in a, <laughs> in a Not a good one. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, it's... Um, you know, it's not a problem, surely. I mean, what he actually did playing at Vancouver, it's not good. He's obviously got a, it's a muscle injury, I think. Let's have a look at this. Well, he might have already been in trouble because uh, it might have been that last collision, actually, as well. He didn't look massively comfortable getting across for Moifana, but this might be at a bit of friendly fire there, copped it in the ribs, perhaps. Oh, his shoulder, I don't know. We'll have to go wait and see. Look who gets the ball out. Here's the, uh, the big Japanese number eight, Tatafu. Very strong, sturdy ball carrier. Ben Tomifuna straight into Richie Arnold. Watch out for him. He's just uh, all over the place. Extremely strong. Great work at the breakdown. The jackal's been made by Julien Marchand. Yeah, very strong over the ball, Marchand. Hard man to move. I'd perhaps quibble whether contact was made. And, yeah, there we go. See, down that... Uh, just above the hip sort of region there for Tomo Ramos. But uh, Marchand getting over the ball very quickly. And once he does, you've got to be really accurate with your clean outs and uh, to, to move a guy like that. Well, he just gets isolated, but Marshall very quick to get down there. His timing uh, with the jackaling is very, very shrewd, isn't it? He's just a very smart player around the tackled player when he wants to go down and jackal. Picked up by Alexandre Ruma. Marshall at the back. He goes off the back, and Lamotte meets him. And uh, Ben Tomafuna trying to get his hands on it. It's a turnover ball. That was fair, a fair contest, if they can get their hands on it. But I think Toulouse have managed to scramble and recycle his uh, growl into the hands of Brennan. Brennan tries to dodge the big man, Tomafuna, who's back up on his feet. Very agile for his uh, very ample size, isn't he? Richie Arnold. Grau getting the ball out, there's Dupont, Dupont gets the ball out wide, he cuts inside. Uh, Retier's missing a uh, number on his, uh, on his jersey, I think. Deporte trying to get his hands on there. New recruit, of course, a former under-20 France player, now getting his first caps playing for Fabien Galtier's uh, senior team. Good opportunity, Dupont gets the ball out. Oh, Malia throws the dummy, tries to get the pass out off the feet of Labelle. Watch out for the, the wonderful footwork from Labelle, but gets smashed and crashed down to the ground. Good hit there from Coleman. Oh, my word, there's a big hit there as well. Rumat keeps it alive. Dupont trying to check the ball out. Merkler this time, the Spanish prop. Big guy as well, I can tell you that. Grau digs for it. He's got Richie Arnold, but he doesn't. He uses the backs. It's a Dupont. Oh, it's just come off uh, Duporter, I think. And uh, the kick through there from Cost, and it's going to be just a, a knock on. There's some good play. They're, they're picking a few uh, a few holes there. Malia going through the gap. Just couldn't quite get that clean ball out to Labelle, who a nice bit of footwork there to, to recover that ball. And when they came back the other way as well, Dupont popped quickly into halfback. So it's great to have a player there that can do that, run a two-halfback system at times. Ran a few of the forward runners. And again, Toulouse just not quite able to get that ball into space. But 
Dupont showed before as well, the, the intelligence and the vision at times to depart from the structure when there is opportunity. Sometimes it can be dangerous. You go off the plan because you see an opportunity, but a player gets isolated, you lose the ball. But he's, he's aware of when is the right moment to go off the plan, when is the right moment to play heads up, as we see poor old Tomar Ramos three minutes on the field and nursing himself. No, stop, or whatever. Sortez-moi les poils, il fait l'effort. Davantage, je veux que vous soyez davantage devant. Just want to get this uh, scrum set perfectly, Monsieur Mabo. Just wanting to get it uh, <coughs> organized. Dupont playing fly off. He'll keep uh, Gro there. Um, Paul Grau, the 26 year old, originally from Osh. Um, he's just learned everything from. Uh, from Antoine Dupont and um, you know a wonderful tutor to have around to enable him to actually uh, you know, understand how he works but there's not a big age difference because they come through the whole system together. It'll probably be good they'll have a good understanding of one another to play alongside which they wouldn't normally get a chance to do. Quick tap. And here we go and this is uh, Toulouse on the attack. Aki just uh, trying to charge into the UBB defence. Richie Arnold with a quick pass. And the attempt to try and jackal coming from that man, Borchaton. Excellent work at the breakdown. He went straight in, the 22-year-old, and got his hands on the ball, earning his team a penalty. What he did really intelligently there, uh, Pierre Borchaton, was to have a second bite at the cherry, to really make it conspicuous for the referee. He almost got it on the first attempt, sort of got knocked around a little bit, but he realised they weren't protected over the ball. He went back in, and, and like I say, it was really stand out for the referee to be able to make that call and give the penalty away. They are tipping the ball on quite nicely to lose, and, and I'm sure they'll keep doing that just when that first forward runner is targeted. They've done it two or three times already. Just move it on to the next player, and that'll eventually, I think, pay dividends. There'll be holes there to pick into. Mathieu Jalabert began his career in New Caledonia before actually arriving in France, and then... Uh... Well, we know the rest of the story. Look who getting the ball into Jalibert. Jalibert, that's a big charge coming through there from the big man, Mofana. Try score it. Jalibert, Damian Peno, Damian Peno. It's a bullet pass out wide. Just uh, creeping inside. Uberti didn't have an option, needed to car carve a different line. This is Jalibert once again. And a big charge uh, coming in this time from Hugo Boniface, the former Bayonet. Oh, a little bit of a, a gap for open for Buros. Luku, change of direction, going through the middle. Watch out for Mofana once again, running into some of the big boys in this Toulouse pack. Ben Tomifuna. Luku, little chip maybe. Well, it goes high if it's been caught. Well, there's a uh, big call there coming from Malia. Had a little bit of a collide there with uh, Lebel, but uh, no one injured. And he hoops the ball upfield and outside of their own half. You see already, you see already both teams being able to adapt their play, play a bit of heads up. This was a bit of heads up as well. It's a shame it went in the air. Perhaps um, there wasn't a lot out there in terms of chasing availability. I think the wingers had been involved in previous plays for Bordeaux, but that's a good sign as well. Both teams are looking for continuity to get away from their positions and just support play and keep the ball alive. It's really good work in the uh, in the line out for Toulouse to uh, to win it. Richie Arnold getting up. He's just such a colossal giant guy, isn't he? At um, six foot ten. Oh, as Dupont's pass is not good. Has been stolen. Boniface picking it up, and there's a uh, Luku Diaby. All oh, under a little bit of pressure. Picked up by Morfana. This is not bad. Deportier, Boros getting the ball out, and uh, Uberti. Tries to wiggle around Cost. Luku, they go again. Tatafu. Maybe a kick this time. It's all been slowed down. Referee saying it's one of your own players who's uh, just uh, snagged that. Marchand told to get out of there. There's Jalabert with a kick outside of the 22. If it's inside, it is outside. And you've got to hit him hard when he takes the ball. Boschaton comes in, but he did a great job. Now it's gone out. Rodrigue Natti first carry in the 13th minutes. And 
It looks like Grau will just try and get rid of this. UBB on the attack, Jalabert goes down the blind side, picked up by Lamotte, he's very mobile, Lamotte love the way that he carries the ball forward. And uh, there's Luku, oh, that's a good pass, that is from Ben Tumafuna, gets hit in the face, picked up and taken forward, little jacket run there from Coleman. Luku goes again, this is a good opportunity, this is Tatafu. And Deportier. And the Toulousans trying to jackal the ball, but it's uh, consolidated by UBB. Why, well, Jalabert, you saw that there's a gap just behind the defence there, Mertz just couldn't take it. Story of my life. <laughs> That's right, you had a pretty good kicking game. It came, you know, it came to the fore on, it on occasions. Get rid of it. <laughs> right, players coming off their feet, uh, Rumat just, you know, still contesting, but not really holding his body up. There's a penalty opportunity here for Bordeaux. I wonder if they'll kick for the corner, you know, using that momentum will go for the sticks. I think take three here gets them outside that, so not that it's too crucial at the moment in terms of that seven point gap, but I think take the points when you can against Toulouse. Beautiful dexterity from Ben Tamifuno, the big man, the orca really, isn't it? You see some of those posts on Instagram of big players with dexterity or whatever oh. they call them, an orca. Um, but yeah, just wonder on that Toulouse defence whether they were allowing Jalibert to have the, the sense that there might be a gap for him and then close it up, you know? Get up on the big runners, the big carriers, and uh, allow that gap for a 10 and hopefully get him get him isolated a little bit he managed to find his support but uh you know that sort of a that sort of a decision is fraught with danger well he's pulled it isn't he you just saw that he just he went into it a little bit too hard might have overcompensated because he missed right on the first kick yeah. so uh just trying to stay over the ball a little too much Easily done. You'd expect the next one to be right down the middle then. <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that, Mitch. Statistically. Um, yeah, 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 statistically. <laughs> well, it looks like Kulashvili's going to come on. So um, I'm wondering if... Uh, is Ben Tomafuna may have to go off. No, it's, um, it's Hugo Boniface, in fact, who's going off. And... Um, Get the lay of the law. I don't really know what's happening. Ben Tumafuna got into a little bit. When he made that wonderful pass, he got hit by a couple of players. So, uh, but he's as hard as nails. Well, Tatafu, <laughs> he was uh, teasing. Thought we were going to get a big uh, Gario in there. Not the, not the, uh, not the case. Finally, Jalabeg getting the ball out. Here he is. Uberti keeps the ball moving very quickly. Look who! Big charge. Great opportunity here with uh, Luku. Jalabeg. Oh, spillage there from Big Ben Tomifuna, picked up by Flamon to lose that possession. Watch out for Graub, kicks it upfield. He's putting um, pressure on the boys at the back. Buros makes the, makes the call at the back and, uh, and the mark, and he'll be able to just sail that up into the stands with everybody back in position. As we see that we've got Tofa, who's uh, potentially going to come on as well. I wonder what's happening here. Do you think that these are the players who just got um, they got themselves into the war zone a little bit? Might be seeing the start of really kind of manipulating that flexibility that you have with front row replacements, you know? So instead of having one set of front rowers play all the way through to, say, 50 minutes and then the, the last lot come through for 30, mixing it up a little bit, give one lot 15 minutes and then 15 again at the end. So... Um, it is, a, it is a position or an area where you can manipulate a little bit the replacement situation. Toulouse in possession. Dupont, Dupont gets it back. There's the uh, pass coming out. Retier, Retier into the hands of Malia. Malia to Lebel. Lebel gets tackled perfectly by Boros. And uh, they go again. This time it's a uh, big charge from Joshua Brennan. Uh, there was a uh, player on the ground there. Oh, the oh. sneaky little pass there from Netty. Love it. Aki picks it up. Goes slaloming between UBB players. Nicely done there with uh, Dupont getting the ball out. Running out of space, keeping it alive. Nice little turn as a, a wild pass has been picked up by Ben Tomafuna from Retia. And here they are once again with uh, a turnover ball.
Oh, that's just not what you like to see, is it? Juan Cruz Malia. It doesn't happen very often in the professional game, whereas we used to see it all the time before. I don't know why. Um, the fact is that players have worked so hard just to make sure that you're safe underneath the high ball. Those hands were there on that occasion. Yeah, the individual skill level. Look at this. Oh, speaking of individual skill level, look at that from Netty, just flicking it out the back. Plenty of uh, good work to keep this ball alive as well from Toulouse. One thing Luku does have is he has got a really good long box kick, a long clearing kick. Unfortunate that ball went to Tami Funa from the Toulouse point of view. But I noticed in Luku's previous kick, it really wobbled. He didn't hit it a, a, a really nice sort of a drop punt, you know, flipping around end over end. It was wobbling a bit in the air. It didn't turn a lot. And that can swing a little bit in the air. And I just wonder if maybe there was a little bit of that in that last kick that, uh, that got missed by Malia because he's, uh, it's not characteristic of him. A little bonus possession, though, for Bordeaux, you know, trying to clear their own, their own half. And now they get to put into a scrub 60 metres up the field. Jefferson Poirot, who's uh, coming back from injury, of course. We've got certain players who are uh, uh, still battling to get themselves fit, but uh, the international's coming back for UBB. And there it is. And the little spillage frustration there for the Argentine fullback. Uh, Tambwe should be back next week. But we've also got uh, Jandre Mares, Sadi Falatea, Cornessa, and of course, uh, Jolmez, all of these players, and Jefferson Poirot. Flexion. But otherwise, uh, they're doing pretty good. Yannick Bru's team in terms of uh, players being available. Just look at this stadium, isn't it absolutely fantastic? Uh, look who, decent scrum, deep in enemy territory. Let's see if this comes back. Tadafu gets it out. Luku, Luku, opportunity. Little chip through. It's a sneaky one. Oh, I don't know if that was the right move, but they had the penalty advantage. Wasn't a bad option if the kick had gone a little bit straighter. I keep looking at Uberti thinking it's uh, Deportea, who's actually had a haircut. But, you know, a few weeks ago with that mud, the, right. mud, the mud flaps hanging out the back there. <laughs> Certainly no slouch to be able to bring in last minute for Biel Bire and, uh, and put Uberti on the wing. Given up going for the three points, Bordeaux, so looking to make the most of it, get this as close as they can to the line. Yeah, I think it's all about making sure that you meticulously make the right throw from the line out and just keep possession. I think what we saw with La Rochelle yesterday, uh, coming at, uh, down at Jean Doge against uh, Bayon, five kicks into the corner and uh, three of them went straight. You're giving away, you know, great scoring opportunities. It's a the huge battleground, there. isn't it? Yeah. Crucial yeah. battleground, the lineouts. Diaby does really well, leaping very high into the sky. It's uh, UBB in possession. Let's see how well they can shift this centurion-like driving mall. Let's see how well organized Mofana joining them. It's been turned. Now that's inching closer, closer towards the try line. But the ball's down here in the ground, <laughs> and the other players continue to fight for it. Look who's got his hands on it. And uh, the Toulouse players hoping that it's a uh, turnover ball. Not the case. Kalashvili hit by Willis. Look who. Look who. Great opportunity. Now is uh, Jalabert. Oh, oh, look at that. How do you manage to keep hold of the ball? Retier was there. That is sensational from Uberti. They keep on going. They need more cavalry. The Toulouse defense very well positioned. Here's Ben Tomifuna, mows straight over the big man, Richie Arnold. Ball comes out, big charge, says Tatafu here. Ball comes out once again. Good angle charge, UBB still in possession. Inching closer and closer. Look who, here's Maxime Lamotte. Lamotte unable to make ground. Finally, they go out, Jalabert, Jalabert chucks it out. This is surely going to be over. Oh, it's in the corner there, Tavita Tatafu. And the Japanese number eight scoring his third try of the season for Union bordeaux Begle, And they take a 10-point lead here, 21 minutes gone at the Matmut Atlantic Stadium. Well, they got a relentless roll on eventually, Bordeaux, didn't they? And the beneficiary is Tatafu in the corner. It started three or four phases before with Uberti just regathering that ball, how he managed to hold on to that. 
under the under pressure from Ritzier was quite extraordinary. And when they came back, one of the crucial carries was Ben Tamifuna, who really got the Ford momentum going. After that, Tatafu carried it himself as well before eventually reloading on that blind side. When it came swinging back, he was in position to go over. Happy days for the UBB staff as they jump with joy. And look who goes for more points this time. Well, he's not got his kicking boots on tonight. That's three misses. But Yannick Brew just uh, watching and understanding and appreciating what he's seeing. Good work, good position to be in. There you go, with the body position just to keep Peter Aki at bay. Well, he'd made a really good carry about two phases earlier. Tami Funa got the initial forward momentum. Then Tatafu on the front foot versus Static is a different proposition. He continued at forward. I think Moifana came in after that, and they were just relentless, Bordeaux. Solid start. Clear take from Adam Coleman, another Tongan international. Originally, I think he was born in, in Hobart, wasn't he, Tasmania? Oof, and admits it. <laughs> Maxime Lamarch. Good carrying. Marshawn taken out of the equation. This time Malia safe as Harris is in the air. Ball comes back out. It's uh, picked up there by Grau. He's, he's running into trouble here. Look at that. Three big men waiting to just pounce. Cyril Caso being one of them. Back up to the halfway line is Willis. Well, that's a good, strong uh, hit there from uh, Ben Tomifuna. Well, now Dupont, Dupont, where's he going to go? Oh, he's been manhandled there in a big way. Bosch turn. And it's a turnover ball. Look at that from Dupont. Maxime Lecou. Is there a kick over the top? Got a kick into the space. It's a brilliant kick. And can he run onto it? Can he use that wonderful the skills of Damian Peno? Look at that. The footballing skills and the pick-up and, and, and crashing over the line to score a third try for UBB. Peno is just unstoppable. Try number eight for him this season. But look at that kick. It was absolutely world-class. Here's an exhilarating try. As we've come to expect from Peno, he hasn't had much of a chance with ball in hand. I thought Dupont had an argument here that he had his knees on the ground and they had to release him. But great selection of kick from Luku, and that's what led to the bounce up to enable Pino to get the little toe on and a nice bounce. Over he goes. Good vision from Luku and the selection of kicks as well. He didn't put in a grubber kick. He didn't put in a longer kick. He put in one that went end over end. So it does roll forward, gives Pino the best chance to make the most of his speed to get round his marker and then also get a chance to get the ball popping up into his arms. He didn't get it on that occasion, but he got the toe through, which eventually uh, eventually did pop up. Jalabert takes over from the tee, following three misses from Maxime Lukou. Three tries, provisional bonus point in the bag. Boy, it's a beautiful, smooth kick, isn't it, from Mathieu Jalabert. He stroked it over. Well, it almost looked like, from his reaction, that he'd slipped with his with his plant foot, with his left foot, as we see the end here. Speaking of plant foot, or not really, the, the educated right boot this time of uh, Damien Pinot, just towing it through enough. That's skill in itself, not kicking it too far so it goes into the hoardings. Just a deft touch, isn't it? It's reading, you know, the, the, the strength and, the, uh, you know, and, the, and the, just the, the, the ball. You and know. the speed that he had coming yeah, through chasing absolutely. onto it to it's, not kick that too far. It's a wonderful bit of skill. It really is. It's a deft touch, isn't it? Well, that wasn't was, whatever made him bleed. No, no <laughs> definitely no. And, no. I think that they've been, uh, there's, a, there's a few uh, few things going on amongst the forwards and the racks, of course, but uh, Richie Arnold ever present in every kind of combat possible on the pitch. It's uh, off the top by Alexander Rume getting his first caps for the French uh, national team. Peter Aki bounces, spins, runs on. It's been picked up by Gros. Toulouse on a mission here. They want to get some points back. Marsh on this time. And uh, into the hands of uh, Joshua Brennan. A little bit high, potentially, from Mofana. But I think the referee, Mr. Amaro, is OK with that. 
Hit back, strong defence, holding Fort Willis. And a good strong hit there coming from Cyril Caso, the former Daxwa. Oh, spillage, spillage. Well, he got knocked out of his hands. Surely that's a knock on. Don't know how that's uh, not been picked up by Monsieur Marbo. Yeah, thank you. Well, there are 20,000 whistles coming from the crowd. 44,000. <laughs> well, only half of them got the chance to get their fingers yeah. out of the mouth, I think. <laughs> yeah, good pressure from, from Bordeaux. Toulon had, had a very good first carry from Arki. Be interesting to see how legal that clean out was, but doesn't matter. You take your chances, put enough pressure on to, to knock that ball as we see a Bonnie Fast coming back on. So, presumably, was that a. Blood a, a head check yeah. or a blood bin? Yeah, I didn't see any blood, but, uh, you know, the fact that I think it was, it must have been, you know, uh, just um, check, concussion check, yeah. Ten-minute cameo for Kalashvili anyway. He loved it. Get, get the heart rate up a little bit oh, for that, later on. Yeah, he loves it. I mean, you know, the more combat, the better. Well, I think they'd rather do that than sit on the sideline riding an exercycle. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Flexion. Look who feeds the ball in. Tata Fu takes it off the back. Great tackle from uh, that man, Paul Cost. 20 year old. Oh, Tata Fu snatches, picks it up, waits for a little bit of support. Diaby can't keep the ball in hand. And uh, Spillage, it will be a scrum for Toulouse. But uh, he's a marauding nuisance of a player for any defence, isn't he? That man, Tevita Tata Fu. Yeah, he has the pick and go and, and just the ability to stay on his feet and stay fighting. But saw a nice occasion there from this man. Well, nice tackle, certainly. Two young centres going head to head. There's the other one. Deportier up against Cost. Now, Deportier just drifted off onto that wide ball that he got from Jalibert. Might have beaten a lot of other centres, but the good thing that Cost did was he watched the player in front rather than ball watching. If he'd been watching on the inside to see when that ball was coming out, he might have got beaten on the outside. But as it was, he was just able to continue across with his normal defensive movement and make a, a textbook tackle around the legs. He was the one who had to bring down Tatafu after that as well, around the legs. Easier yeah. said than done. Yeah. I don't know if you, you prefer Ben Tomafuna or Tatafu. Oh, geez. I, well, they've got a luxury having both of them, don't they, in I, consecutive I, phases? I, I just, you know, um, I, would, I, I would I would, tie their laces together. <laughs> Here we go. And uh, Dupont, Dupont going around the outside. He does this so well, doesn't he? Gets rid of a couple of players, finds a little bit of space. It's been picked up by Oberti, who uh, smashes and crashes it up into the sky. Uh, Dupont takes a quickie. And it's been picked up there by Cost. Is he going to go for 50-22? No, change of direction. He'll try and go right through the middle. But he meets someone who's um, met him very, very hard. It's Dupontier once again. A little bit of a back and forth between the two youngsters. Marchand. Does well to get past Cyril Caso. Is uh, Grau getting the ball out? Is Flamon Flamon getting involved? This is uh, good from Toulouse. Richie Arnold this time picks it up, takes it forward. Good running line from Joshua Brennan. Retier, Retier gets it, gets it deep. There's Dupont, he'll kick that into the corner. He picked up here by Malia. Now, what options has he got? Malia looking to try and get the ball to Labelle. Does really well. Oh, he's given the ball to Penno. You can't do that. Watch out, he's off two defenders beaten. How many is going to be? Can't go around the long way. Does get the ball back out. There's an opportunity. He gets it back, doesn't he? Where are you going, Damian? There's the kick. And it's been picked up by a certain Malia. Now, where's he going to go? Running into that UBB defence. And uh, doesn't make many inroads. Picked up by Merkler. Merkler, he's uh, good ball carrying there. Shows the ball, but goes and gets over the game line. Here's uh, Dupont. Dupont, that's a wonderful pass. Rumat, surely it's going to be a try. Oh, he didn't make the pass to Retia. And that might be a turnover ball. That's fantastic from Boros. And well, uh, they've still got possession somehow to lose. Uh, nine minutes to go in the first half. 17 0. To lose with a great. Golden opportunity to try and make inroads, get themselves points. There's uh, Netty this time. 
Willis, Willis, Willis off the back. Gets hit very hard by Morfana. Here's Grau. Rumat this turn. Rumat trying to churn, trying to ground the ball. It's been held up. Mr. Marbo is there. Marshawn will try and get his hands on this. He does have his hands on the ball. Puts it between the legs, gets it back out. Who's going to go for it? Oh, is that a try? I think that's a try. And I think it might be Willis. If it is, that's fantastic. Excellent vision to get himself a little bit of line. Goes down, grounds the ball from very low. And that is an excellent score there from Jack Willis, the uh, former Wasps fan. Finally, some reward for Toulouse. They've found themselves three tries to nil down, but they've had plenty of good play. It was probably just a matter of time. And it's culminated in a little pick in place from Jack Willis. And might review that because it looks like it's sort of got rolled. Nothing against that being rolled or slid forward across the grass to the try line. I think it's got the line there. And like I say, I don't think there's a rule saying you can't roll it across the ground so long as your, your movements of your body are, are, are legal. As yep. long as there's no separation and so long as there's no double movement. But if it's, if it's, if it's momentum that takes it over and there's downward pressure. Referee just saying that they're just checking now, but he uh, says that the, uh, the end of the ball touching the line, he said. So they just... Well, like I say, I, th I think Willis, Willis hit this early on the grass and then slid it forward there. But it has got there, and he hasn't made a second movement to get it across for his body anyway. For me, it's this one. Look, look what... Look what Well, if he's still got his hands on that there, then yes, the ball's touched the line, but uh, that won't help. Yeah, well, I think they've covered all the angles that matter. TMO says he can't see the ball reaching the line. The referee says he had seen it touch the line, which I think we could see as well. The referee has made the call and he said he saw it. He was in the best position. They went up to check with the TMO, but the, the try... Looks like it will stand because Adrian Marbo was a couple of meters away. There's the conversion kicks there from Malia, and uh, they do get seven points, and it's 17-7. Uh, well, I think the referee did have a better angle than what the cameras were able to show us there with the other bodies lying around. Was that the second time that Malia had to kick that conversion? Is that a nine-pointer? <laughs> I, mean, I think he put one through really quickly there before they reviewed. Jalabert, Rumat, and uh, met by Boschaton, couldn't strip him of the ball. And it's Grau who has the chance to clear his lines. Goes high. Not a clearance kick. This is an interesting one. Well, you're not going to stop this man, Tap Tap Fu. As soon as he's got the ball in his hands and he's hitting the deck, you know it's, it's UBB, you're in possession. Picked up by Cyril Cazzo. There's uh, Luku. Luku goes blindside. Jalabert, the inside pass. Not a, not a bad move if there were other options, but it was well read by the Toulouse defence. And they've stolen the ball. Good counter rucking that was. Grau kicks it up. Field. No one's there apart from Damian Penno. Who's going to go behind the posts and run? No, he's going <laughs> to clear his lines. OK. Is that a play? It's not a problem for Dupont. He wants to keep that in play. Okay. Marchand's outside of him. Six minutes remaining. Netty. Bonifast doing well in the uh, in the loose. Alexander Rumat carries. Malia. Cost has been met fervently there by Deporter. They're having a wonderful little uh, tussle, those two. Oh, 
Oh, that's uh, good work, that is. Very good work. Tatafu, once again, he's an absolute menace. There's a Dupont gets absolutely smashed there. And uh, that's a forward pass. So it's going to be uh, UBB who get possession. That hit coming in on Dupont. Very, very fierce indeed. Look at this. Well, normally, this might be interesting to see what costed here because he's that's a, that's a deliberate knock on. That is definitely a deliberate. He's trying to flick the ball. He's realized late that there's a threat from Pinot coming in. And he's, yeah, I think he's going to be in trouble here. So that you, you know, you get those tap passes, right? So the ball comes across, you just tap it, but it has to go backwards. You know? This one here is no attempt to catch it. He just realizes there's a threat, slaps it away. The question will be, was there any cover in behind? If Pino had successfully intercepted that, would he have gone all the way? Because that could turn into... Can't give a red for this, can you? It's always yellow, isn't it? But no, it's Pinot always was, yellow. He was, he was clear, wasn't he? This could but he's be. trying to tap it to uh, LaBelle out wide. Is it LaBelle, I think? Yeah, he's trying to tap it. He's trying to tap it, but the uh, arms meet. I think he'll say that. His lawyer's going to say that. <laughs> yeah. I think his action was just really to, to ruin the opportunity of Puno to get this ball. Yeah, I think that you probably that, called it right. That I'm getting a little bit too... Um, well, they're checking Too if there's a covering defender here. Yeah, but there's no, there's no one back. Exactly. There's no one back. Okay, where's Malia? Malia's, Malia's nowhere to be seen. No. Aki's not going to get back there either. And LaBelle's not going not to right. hunt and chase down yeah, Peno from there. It's 35 metres out, but I think they've got enough cause here. They're establishing cause to give a, a penalty try and probably a yellow card. But <laughs> what yeah, he's talking about penalty try. Oh, he's, uh, yep. So the TMO, the TMO is saying penalty and yellow card, but he's not saying penalty try. Monsieur Marbo is saying penalty try. But we need to see a different angle with the player at the back to see if Malia was present because... Was, okay. There was a player on the line. So we know that he, he, you go quick, but there was a player on the line. So Malia was back. They must have had a, a bit of a different cam camera angle from what we saw then, but... Uh, okay. I was looking for Malia, you know, but I couldn't see him. But Kost gets, um, gets the yellow card. And uh, Toulouse are under a little bit of pressure here. They don't go for the penalty. They go for the kick into the corner. Well, they know that as soon as there are a couple of phases, there's going to have to be some coverage from the Toulouse Lucy's to cover oh, the backs. Oh, well, it's Flamon who takes the takes the, the line out, the botched line out. <laughs> Dupont with a clearance kick. Well, they do get a line out, but it's a little bit further out from where they would prefer it. Um, yeah, this is one of those games where you've got an extra player on the pitch. They will take advantage of that because we've got two very good, expansive running teams who are fully capable of reading the situation and understanding exactly where they should put their fast players. Yeah, Bordeaux's got a talented back line who have also got a lot of cohesion because not only do they play at club level, they play in the intensity of internationals together two botched lineouts now and now they're making mistakes that uh, could prove costly and UBB need to sort that out <laughs> Paul costly <laughs> hey. goes high oh beautifully taken Boros underneath the high ball so good and this time you can see that they've got the ball more fine against the ball at Jaliba Jaliba Ben Tomafuna playing outside center <laughs> Satafu takes it in and it's a good tackle there coming from Malia the Argentinian making sure that he was grounded in a big way uh, Diaby gets the ball into the hands of Cazo Cazo Marchand trying to get his hands on that in the in the loose now they've got that extra player watch out is he going to get space out wise oh it's Maxime Lamotte Go Going around the outside, oh, that was so close. Oh my word, he did everything right. We love hookers in that position, oh my. <laughs> well, he's seen this in his dreams, I'm quite sure that in and away, and then the one-handed plant in the corner, he's seen the modern wingers do this.
Look at him, he's going around Dupont. He's, he's taken on Dupont, and plus he's tried to transfer to get that plant in the corner. I think he saw it before it happened. Good on him for the, uh, for the, for the not dreaming, the daydream, the, the inspiration, the ambition, <laughs> the audacity. I think that was absolutely world class. I give him all the credit he deserves. Maxime Lamarck, just a, they call it a, cad, a cadrage d'abordement in French, you know, which basically means going around the outside. But when you try and go around at the outside of, 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 uh, of a certain Antoine Dupont, then you know that you've got to make it happen. <laughs> I just love that. Well, normally they'd expect a back who sees a, a front rower lining them up to, you know, the back will expect the front row is just going to run straight and run over the top and so then you know the temptation is to plant on your feet prepare for the impact and uh, away he goes with the step Dupont on this occasion being up to the task well played that's what the modern two does right very agile very explosive over a short amount of time uh, distance Maxime Mott doing a brilliant job they win the penalty it's uh, I think it's Ben Tomafuno who's gone down on that far side there would be a few hookers from the old days, the, the early hybrid hookers, hooker slash wing like Sean Fitzpatrick, Phil Kearns might yeah. have a bit of a beef with you there. Hooker obviously sees themselves a little bit apart from the, the other front rowers, from the props, you know, they, they see themselves doing the hard work but also bringing a little bit of skill and finesse uh, to their game as well. Dane Cole's another one, pretty oh, good. Yeah, he pretty he's good scored a wide. few tries in his time, in fact, he, you know. You know, as good a defender and a player as Dupont is, I think uh, Dane Cole's there would, would equally fancy himself and probably get there in the corner, I think. You know, those those, those small legs just sort of, you know, just going dancing away very quickly as they... A uh... yeah, little Benina sewing, sewing machine, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. And, well, mistake from Toulouse, so in the last 30 seconds, this is an opportunity now for um, for UBB to try and get something from this. But those two botched lineouts, you know, have really, you know, they've slapped Bordeaux in the face, and it's not exactly what they want because they find themselves in very good controlled situations where they've got an extra player on the pitch as well, and they just haven't managed to consolidate possession. You've got to do the simple things right. Territory-wise, 47-53. The last 10 minutes, we'll look at that. 86 to 14. Good scrum, good setup. Platforms here, and they've got an extra player on the pitch. It's Luku who will feed this. We've gone past the 40-minute mark. Last play of the half. Luku. Out it comes. Pass back. Not a great pass. Doesn't matter. Jalabert picks it up. Now Boros. This is surely going to go. No one will stop him. Wonderfully carved up. That is just classy from the fullback from UBB. He just used the decoy runner out wide. Went straight. Such great velocity. Great strength. Unstoppable. A fantastic try from that stellar Bordeaux back line. They ran into space. They were clinical with their execution at the end. I think this first pass might have concentrated Toulouse's attention, thinking it was perhaps going to be a, a drop. But Luku did incredibly well to regather the ball, fire out that pass in front of the player, and momentum wasn't lost. Here it is here, and he just shovels it out, but it was right in front of whoever it was who received it next. And the conversion is good, and look at that. That's the ideal scenario, isn't it? Because now it's 24 points for Union at bordeaux Bagle and uh, seven points for Toulouse. And uh, the ideal scenario, but um, they'll be happy with that try, knowing that they had great possession oui, oui, bon in the final fight. Let's get a reaction Lucu. from Maxime Lucu. Very intense. What have you picked up? Yeah, we're realistic every time we get the ball in hand. Um, so we got a yellow card going against us. We need to score while we've got an extra play on the pitch. Uh, we don't want to play in our own half. It's dangerous. Uh, yeah, we're shifting the ball very well and seizing our opportunities.
Thibaut Flamand. Thibaut Thibaut Flamand. Comment répondre à cette, euh, cette agressivité Comment remettre la main là, sur le ballon Comment remettre la main sur le ballon Oui, nous devons garder la main sur le ballon. Oui, nous devons garder la main sur le ballon. 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 They've got their work cut out tonight. When you actually look at this fixture, you actually think this could be, you know, one of the the semi-finals that will be played down at this very stadium. You know, come come uh, come June. Yeah, absolutely. Look, it's it's definitely not impossible for Toulouse. We know how how good a squad they are and and, and how easily they can score points. But it has been impressive from Bordeaux. One thing that I'd add to the mix of what, what they have tonight is confidence. You know, the confidence for Luku to be able to put that kick through knowing who knows going to make the most of it. Of anyone on the planet, he's one of those guys who can make things happen. And so having that confidence of the quality players around them has just, you know, made it a lot easier for every individual player just to, you know, keep moving the ball around, look for his support. Time for the second half here at the Matmut Atlantic Stadium in front of these 44,000 fans who have been, uh, well, just uh, entertained for the first 40. And it will spill into the second half logically as uh, the likes of Maxime Lamotte might get his chance to just go on a little bit of a wiggle and a swerve and a, and a slalom around Antoine Dupont in the second half. Um, who knows? The fact is, it's an interesting game and uh, UBB are seizing control as they try and move up in the, in the standings and get themselves uh, an important win here tonight. Home success is primordial for every team in the top categories. And this clash here is very much um, an important one for UBB. It is Malia who will get the second half underway. Ball. Ball. Cazo takes the high ball. And that's going to be a two scrum. They hold him in, just not allowing him to, to pass the ball out. And uh, excellent work there from the forwards. They clamped him big time. Yeah, and, and that would have been something they were looking for at half time, just to, to start the second half well, put the pressure on. Probably a plan which relies on the kick being accurate, going to the right player that they're targeting, and uh, it did on this occasion by the looks, and they really got in and made the most of it. And that's a huge bonus coming into the second half when you're down by 17 points to just get those little moments that go your way, and all of a sudden you're on attack, you've got a spring in your step, you're down on the board 22 and you're starting your comeback. Good scrum important here. We've seen how important the line-out is in terms of setting a good platform. Scrum as well. No change for Toulouse, as you can see. Oh, it goes down. Grouch has got his hands on the ball. He'll get it out. His Retier, he's got 14 on his back of his jersey, finally. Gets the number. Grouch gets the ball out. Is uh, taken forward there by Flamon. Flamon into traffic. Coleman with the hit. Grouch again. Merkler this time. Whoa, he's just bouncing and chucking Moafana out of the way. Room out this time. Some good possession here for Toulouse. Joshua Brennan this time. A little bit of resistance. Room out once uh, again. And um, they got a penalty here. Penalty advantage. Ben Tomafuna trying to get his hands on the ball. He's such a wonderful jackler. We'll, um, go back for the advantage. I, I think that they're probably going to they kick. Or oh, maybe they'll use up the clock and, and kick for the three points just to uh, wait until they got cast back on the pitch. Yes, absolutely. All those little tricks to try and chew <laughs> no, up the course. time. Of course, they're not going to. They're going to kick for the corner. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> little things, you know, a couple of reset scrums when they go down, finding touch, that chews up a few more, you know, 20 or 30 seconds. Holding on to possession when you're a player down is important, as we see Moifana get thumped backwards. Wins in for a second bite on uh, Angela Merkler. Oh. 
Marshawn, Marshawn picks up by Willis. Now the truck and trailer times four. Brennan unable. Oh, he's spilled, drops the ball to Yabi with her. Just getting involved there, and uh, that's that's good play. You know, you want players like that who. Um, the work rate for Diaby and players who don't really come into the limelight is sensational. The dirty work, you know, you've got these unsung heroes right across, uh, you know, this, the, the forwards, of course. And on that occasion, he did a great job, didn't he? Yes, it's a bit of a roll of the dice, isn't it, sometimes in those malls, you know, cohesion can help in terms of resisting that forward drive, but also having a maverick at times. If you feel like there's an opportunity to mess it up, as we see, uh, a very interested viewer there, not far from getting on, on back on the pitch either, Robbie. Oh, he's, the, he's the 24th player today, Roman Tomac. Of course, uh, seven months out after that serious uh, knee, knee ligament injury against Scotland down in uh, down in San Tietjen. He should be back against Poe next weekend. Tatafu, Jalibert, now a bit of space to Porter getting the ball out. There's uh, Boros on his right foot. Slams it upfield, is that a 50-22? No, it isn't. Kept in by Malia. LaBelle smashes it into the stands. What a great kick that was. Well, even though it wasn't a 52-22, it's just as good. I mean, they've got a line-out throw-in um, just outside the Toulouse 22. So good pressure reapplied by Bordeaux. Gets straight back down the Toulouse end after a mistake. Can be demoralizing for a team. A simple mistake off the line-out. Whole bunch of changes as we see Cost coming back on. Ten minutes in the bin, all over. Cyril by Francois Cross. You got all of these players who are just coming on. You can understand that. Uh, yeah, we have Aldegheri. How many French internationals do you want to come onto the pitch? Yeah, a lot of beef in the forwards. They're a bit limited in their backs reserves. They came in with a 6 2 split and they've already got Dupont on. Oh, that's a good hit. Miafu makes his mark originally. Offside. It is. Can't touch that ball after you've been hit. Well, Miafu, French international now. First two caps playing for Le Bleu. For the big Australian. He's a big human, isn't he? He's a Ford pack on his own. So they've now got a Ford pack and seven eighths to lose. So. Uh, doesn't always translate, of course. You know, you get uh, some big guys maybe not as, as good in the in the scrums as smaller guys, better technical guys, but pretty hard to shift backwards. Miafu acquitted himself well at international level as well. Cyril Bite, 50 capper as well. Born in Pau. Started his career playing for Lannin Mazan. Down in the southwest. Perfectly taken there by Carson into the tackle zone there's a bit of uh, block there and a forward pass these little mistakes it's getting in the way of what they're trying to do good skill from Cyril by here he was getting knocked over and flicked it over his uh, over his shoulder and that was the pass it was uh it's just a little bit forward that's what it was yeah not that one wasn't Got called it, absolutely. We'll read it in the paper tomorrow. It was Ford. But it wasn't. It was an interesting time when you get all the internationals coming back, you know, from the Six Nations and how they fit back into the into the fold because you know they, it's a long stint to you know to have key players absent. During that time, you've got a bond that's created amongst, uh, you know, the group who are getting picked week in, week out. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, they've got to, yeah. like, sort of, you know, just fit in again. You've got to be careful with how you integrate them, absolutely. It's easier with a big group. If you've got two or three coming in, that can be sometimes more disruptive. Picks up, Jalabert goes outside. That's nicely done, Mofana. Oh, he manages to get the ball into the hands of Uberti. Here's Luku. Luku needs to get quick ball. Ben Tomafuna picks it up. Drills a hole. In uh, Toulouse defence, Jalabert's big kick. Who's going up for that? Costa's there, and of course he's met by Deporter. No, it's just uh, flying in over the top. A little bit clumsy from Bouchaton. No, a peno as well. It's an easy pen, isn't it? 
Maybe a shame there that they uh, they hit Ben Tamifuna. He's being ver very closely marked now by Toulouse and, and always does well with the ball, but it was noticeable off that first ruck. There were a lot more Toulouse players in there than Bordeaux. Bordeaux seemed to have huge numbers, but where they had obviously planned to just truck it up on the second phase, maybe there were opportunities to move that a little bit further wide. But there's the infringement there from Bordeaux, just going straight over the top and onto the ground. Important to stay on your feet there, otherwise it's going to present a really bad picture for the referee. Marco Gazzotti comes on for Diaby. He's a very, very fine player, Gazzotti. Former captain of the France under-20s. Stolen. Peno, Peno. Tatafu hunted down there by Cross. Maxime Luku, Mirfou getting his hands on that again. There's the clearance kick. See, there's a lot more pressure when... The, oh, picked up there by uh, Labelle. Where's he going? Malia. It's one in the high sky. Buros unable to pick it up. It's uh, Retier, Retier. Look who. Toulouse in possession. Marchon, Cost. Gets the ball out and they uh, go again. Dupont this time. Dupont. Just sticks it down into the corner. That's a nice little kick. Bit of a bit of pressure on Jalabert. Has to watch the ball go out. So it's going to be a line out for Bordeaux. And they'll want to try and clear their lines ASAP. It has to be clean line out take. Yeah, interesting to see Dupont's play in an open field, given what he's been working on with the Sevens team in the last couple of months. He's never been a slouch, of course, but he's probably got a little bit of extra speed now when there is space. So much space to cover in that Sevens game and taking on players and going around them. Probably more part of his armory now than it used to be. Jean-Louis Barassi. Cleanly taken there by Coleman. Ben Tomifuna. Bumps into Willis. Made safe with a little bit of help from Marco Gazzotti. Guido Pitti. Another Argentinian coming on. No, we can't tirer the joueurs. And look who. And Toulouse getting a bit of possession in, in Bordeaux territory. Malia, Labelle, Labelle looking for a gap. Runs into Beauchaton. Marshall, Marshall into the hands of uh, that man, uh, Dupont. That was Willis, Willis. Snagged by Deporter. And Toulouse gradually f getting into the 22. Alexander Rumer fearless when he goes head into the Bordeaux defence. Mirfu, Dupont goes over the shot this time. Picked up by Labelle. Labelle goes around the outside. Good tackle there from Penno. And the cavalry arrived to try and make it safe. Good uh, counter rucking from UBB. Ten minutes into the second half. Claims that there was a knock on in the tackle. Oh, he could have taken that. He could have hit uh, Grout. He wasn't protected, the ball was out. Marsh on this time. Ben Tomafuna can't get his hands on it. And the Toulouse players queue up once again, back into position. Mirfu. These are the kind of players you really want to try and use to drill holes in this uh, Bordeaux defence. Good work. Richie Arnold. Oh, it could be a penalty going against uh, Union Bordeaux Bagley. Just a uh, tackler fell on the wrong side. Dupont gets the ball out now. Peter Aki outside. Yeah, there's the inside pass to Cost. Costa Labelle. Labelle. This is dangerous. Broken play. I'm a best penalty. Uh, Boniface with the hit. Ooh. Oh, it's an interception. We'll go back to the penalty. And Jalabert down. Hopefully it's not that left knee. Not what you want to see. And if he feels a little bit uh, tight around the knee, you want to take him off. He's going to be such an important player going into the 
in, into the business end of the top cat doors for UBB. You've got Matteo Garcia, the, uh, the fine under-20s player who could come on to replace him. Been a tough last 10 minutes or so for Bordeaux as they try and resist the two lose players as they come again. Marshall. Charge from Miyafu. Goes over the top, the hit from Tatafu. It's into the hands. Oh, that's a fine score indeed. And it had to come from Peter Aki. And it was straight through the middle. Bullet pass into his hands. And he crashes over, unchallenged. And they get their second try tonight to lose. And Peter Aki gets his third this season. Great execution from Toulouse. Only two or three phases, but they got that initial go forward really, which is a pretty thankless task off the tap penalty. The big man, Meafu, carrying them forward on the second phase. And then Peter Aki, what a fantastic line. Threats all over the park. Really hard for Bordeaux to get two or three tacklers in on everybody. So. There are going to be gaps, and they pick the right one on this occasion to lose. Like I was saying, it's been a tough period for Bordeaux. They've defended really, really well, but eventually, physically, it takes its toll. And they're wanting probably to have a little bit of a breather here. And as Jelly Bear goes off now, as you mentioned, Robbie, no point really at this stage risking him for perhaps the later phases. It didn't look like much, did it? But the fact that, um, you know, he's feeling something, you just got to, you know, wrap him up in cotton wool because he's got the X facts to that boy. And uh, as I said, such an important cog in that Bordeaux machine, uh, especially going into the business end of the season. Garcia comes on to replace him, a fine replacement. Mirfu, Kalashvili will go in for him. Toulouse. And Boniface has uh, been replaced for the second time by the Georgian. Tofa comes on for Ben Tomafuna, another Tongan. 24 14. It's a good hit. That last one from Malia really had the time and the angle. He's complaining he might have been shortchanged on the line out. Yeah, I think with a 10, a French 10 coming off, you've always got the boss who in French rugby traditionally is the nine. And Luku certainly is that assertive kind of a nine to run the game. So losing Jelly Bear perhaps. Not so important in the context of a team effort. I think that we've... Um, I think that things have moved on. Look at Tatafu. Oh, stolen by Acosta. Does really well. And that was a freebie for him. Dupont, a little change of direction. Malia. He's going to kick or is he going to run? Ooh, that's a good gripping tackle there coming in from that man, Coleman. Dorian Aldegari, Dudu, they call him. Well, oh, there's a penalty. You can't pick that up, Mr. Miafu. Well, he, he left it alone the first time and then, then maybe reflected and thought, oh, hold on, maybe I was on side. So good first thought. And maybe he thought that was enough for the referee to say, <laughs> okay, mate, you've made an attempt. Yeah, but you've got to just think how many cameras are actually on him while he's actually playing in his top 14 game. Well, he also might have thought the bigger danger was allowing a Bordeaux player. To, to, to pick that ball up. So he went in again. Here's Garcia. Well, if he's got peripheral vision, just like a mantis shrimp, then he'll understand that sort of, you know, maybe there wasn't like sort of, you know, uh, there was no one back to defend behind him. So well, you Grow just never was the know. one who touched the ball and then he ran forward. So maybe Miafu thought he'd been put on side. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. Who knows what goes through those four heads <laughs> in those close quarters. Maxime Lamart, there it is. Oh, it's gone over the top, but it's been picked up, and it's been picked up by that man, Mofana Luku. And they haven't had too much possession in this uh, in this part of the 
the pitch in the second half. Lamotte, the Jackalers are about. Lukou gets it out. There are players on the ground. Good opportunity for Garcia to go on one of those weaving runs. He gets hit very hard. A strong uh, tackle there coming in from Francois Cross. Lukou. Forwards doing the business, more fun around the outside. There's a good pass as well. Deporte drops the ball, spillage, and there's a, a double knock on, I think. No, it wasn't knocked on by LaBelle. So, uh, Penno. Oh, he's a sneaky one, isn't he? Umberti. Umberti and Antoine Dupont. Where's he going to go? Watch out. Oh, well spotted by Maxime Lamotte. Moafana, it's a wild pass that goes backwards, and there's a little bit of pressure. He's going to have to kick that. It's been taken back into the half. Oh, nicely taken. Now, Garcia, chip over the top. Is he going to chip? Where's he going to go? A bit of a mismatch. The offload's pretty good into the hands of Lamotte. He's got a bit of support, but he needs uh, more players there. Tofa. No. <laughs> A bit of midfield madness taking place at the moment, you know, it's uh, anybody's ball. Nope, it's his. Dupont, Malia, Cost, he's got a player outside and he's, he's pretty quick as well. The name's LaBelle. Malia breaks free, oh, little bit of contact there from Coleman, just enough to bring Malia down. Marchand. Oh, this is uh, kind of opening up. Playing offside position is a, it's a simple giveaway, isn't it? There's some tired legs on the pitch, I get the impression. Willis, Penno trying to get his hands on it. His cost. Oh, the offload is beautiful. Aki, if he can get a pass inside, then they're away. But he doesn't get the ball to Dupont. Buros is there. He's still going, Aki. Look how strong he is, the Chongan. Wonderful short pass into the hands of Willis, but it was just trapped. Mirfu, Toulouse looking for another score. The ball chucked out and has been picked up, but I'm afraid that Barassi can't do anything with that. They got a penalty, though. Just got to find the right field position of when the, uh, where the penalty took place for the offside call. One-way traffic for the last little while as Toulouse controls possession. Bordeaux still doing really well to hang on a defence. Down to work rate, right, getting up off the ground quickly, getting back in that defensive line, keeping numbers there, being able to come forward quicker when you've got good numbers. So he's just come on, Gazzotti. And he's already going off, boots off, little limp. And Mamadou Diaby comes on. 137th match playing for UBB. The former Grenoblois. And they're going for the corner. Not even going for the three points there, Mertz. That just gives you a... Yeah, they feel they've a got a sign of the confidence on, on that they're... Side, yes. Great offload from uh, Paul Cost over there to, to Aki. And as you said at the time, maybe one more pass. Easy to say. But one more pass might have seen Toulouse cross the chalk. Marchand, Richie Arnold, we've seen that connection happen so many times this season. Outside of the international windows, of course. 20 minutes to go, Toulouse driving forward. Is this coming out? Is that going to be a... No, you can't get your hands on that. It is Grau who's got his hands on. He waits for the players to get back up onto their feet. Cyril Bai not making inroads. Rumat. Gets a metre or two. Grau getting the ball into the hands of Richie Arnold this time. Arnold and the, the Bordeaux defence being tested and, and pushed and stretched every single time. Cross this time. <laughs> Maxime Lamont just making sure that he comes down. Sorry, Bush at all. Miafu. Cost wants the ball in his hands. There's an option for Dupont, Dupont, oh, the handoff, he's going to go, he's going to go all himself, no, he isn't, LaBelle, LaBelle, oh, lovely footwork from the winger, that is sensational, and he's such a dangerous player, isn't he, LaBelle, and that is try number six for the Fox on the wing.
A fantastic try. Great skill. Eventually, Dupont gets the ball. He's brought his acceleration. He's honed it even more in that sevens environment. And LaBelle knowing when to cut back in at the last moment on the switch. Here he goes here. Wait till there was no other option but to go back inside. And he made it count. Good feet. Good speed. Good acceleration from both Dupont and LaBelle. And the result, try to lose. It's such a beautiful reverse pass, isn't it, from Antoine Dupont. He's a star in world rugby. Well, he's got the ability to just have that awareness. And he, you know, it's without focusing on any one player, but he just sees the movement of bodies around him, teammates and opposition. And he's just conscious of where everybody is at any given moment. And so being able to make the right, op make the right decision and find the player a real skill. I bet he's passionate about quantum physics, isn't he? <laughs> if he's got time to be. Picture boy for the Olympic Games now. There we go. Malina kicks the extras, and look, it's a three-point game. 24 points to 21. And uh, what looked like a, a bonus point scenario has now uh, turned into uh, how to hang on and try and get the win. That's all that matters now for UBB. They need to get possession. And they're coming up against a very strong team that's littered with quality French internationals. Lots of changes. Lamotte's replaced by Romain Laterade. There he is, the 27-year-old. Uh, Just his sixth game playing for UBB. A few changes for Toulouse as well. I saw Richie Arnold go off as well. Theo and Tamak is going to come on as well. Uh, Grau's kick. Garcia kicks it high. Tries to collect. Oh, he collects it beautifully as well. On 22 pawns there. Cramon replaces Marshawn. Still going. Oh, it's stolen. Well, did he get a touch to that? It's not a knock on. I don't think so. Willis is the player who goes off. Oh, there's Cramon. Cramon's come on leaps and bounds for Toulouse ever since uh, the start of the season. Playing a lot of rugby during the Rugby World Cup, of course, when Toulouse uh, went backwards. Not a problem. Barassi does super well to just untangle himself from the tackle. Mali are unable to get the ball out. Is Dupont. Dupont still keeps the ball alive. Little kick through there, an opportunity, well, LaBelle, LaBelle, LaBelle's going to carry it in, it's going to ground the ball, look at that, and a second in succession there for Matisse LaBelle, try number seven for him, but just perseverance, and finally getting a little toe poke, and he just collects and grounds the ball, and look, Toulouse have taken the lead with 16 to go. Yes, it's turned into the Dupont and LaBelle show Dupont with his strength there. Bordeaux finally get the ball free, but it comes to Toulouse, and the little chip kick through, a little grubber through from Paul Cost it was, but just before then, Dupont has shrugged off a tackle, stayed on his feet, got the ball out to Cost, and then the perseverance from LaBelle to chase that ball through. A couple of nice little touches, got away from the desperate arms of the Bordeaux defenders, and over he goes again. Luku again left on the ground, regretting what he's just seen to lose seemingly out of nowhere, although it's been position and, and territory that has really weighed on, on Bordeaux in these first 24 minutes of the second half. Well, the last 20 minutes, I mean, they're in a, in a difficult situation now. 24-28, and Toulouse have turned the tables. Malia kicking well from the tee. But just look at the footballing skills. The two touches from LaBelle, that's the first one. That's the touch that gets it away from the, the outstretched hands of Luku. And then afterwards, it's job finished. Yes, and it went right back to Dupont as well, shrugging off one tackle where it, the movement could have died then, plus the finesse to get a pass out to Paul Cost. Again, that's where the movement could have died. Garcia kicks it high. The Toulouse supporters, very happy. Miafu and Grau with the clearance. Lukou. Kicks a very high ball, good position outside of the 22, but watch out, there's a 
couple of nines coming up against each other. Straight out. Rear mistake from Dupont under pressure from his counterpart. Maxime Luku saw what he was trying to do, just get himself a little bit of space. He'd pre-planned it as he took the ball, wheeled around to his left to get onto his perhaps his favoured boot. Yeah, and there's Gorka coming on. Laterad outside of the Toulouse 22. Nicely taken, that was. Bit of contact in the air. No penalty awarded. Garcia. It's uh, Les Gorgu's uh, number nine. Look at that. It's just a... Well, it's stolen. Two knock They got knocks. Yeah, that's it. A yeah, really good defence. They lined up on Diaby there. Two defenders. Hit him hard. The ball popped out. There was the first knock-on from Bordeaux. And just trying to regain it. I think it was Brennan got his hand out to try and regain it. Just a second little knock-on, but still to lose. Get the put into the scrum, so it is a turnover. There's one of the other, one of the Tamak brothers. Oh, just looking at it, we've got um, Luku, who's playing outside half. Liz Gorg is playing nine. And uh, so I'm just trying to get my head around where Garcia's moved to fullback, I think. Off the back, it will be taken by Rumat. And Dupont's solid kick. Where's the bounce going? Uberti, Uberti around the outside. The big man hits the deck. Yeah. Just a little bit clumsy there from, from Brandon. I think he uh, kind of slipped, didn't he, and then went in with the arm rather than actually uh, going with the tackle. Part of that's because Paul Cost makes such bootlace tackles that the player <laughs> with the ball drops so quickly. I'm not trying to excuse anything, but when Cost's in there, here he goes there, chop, down he goes. And I think, uh, I think Brennan was lining up to, to take more of a contact higher up. Taking a, he found the book of how his father used to play, old Trev. He might be the guy you get coming in to do those shoelaces and bootlaces. <laughs> <laughs> Tummy and Funer and Co. There we go off the top, push the on, nicely done. Luku, Luku gets the ball back. An option here, Oberti goes to try and carve up that Toulouse defence. Luku, let's see if they can open things up. Deporter, he shrugs off Cost and uh, takes the ball to the edge of the 22. Kalashvili this time. Crashes down quite quickly, slowed down marginally. Big drive and charge through coming in from Pitti. Look who they go again. This is better. Do, there's uh, Peno, Peno, nice hands. Oh, my word, the hands, that is sensational. Can he crash over? Oh, did he have a full on the line? I don't know, but Bushaton grounds the ball in the corner. Bordeaux are back in business. Sensational hands, the soft hands. Oh, my word, that was exquisite, expansive rugby there from Bordeaux. Yes, the insertion of Pinot was crucial. He hasn't got the ball in his hands from passes too often tonight, but here he is, extra man, beautiful, subtle little skills. The question will be this right foot as Aki comes across desperately. This right foot of Bushtong, did it hit the line? Oh, may have just avoided it. On first glance there, I think he's just missed the line. It's okay. They've been given the green light wow. that the try has been given. You know, he skipped, he, he hit, the, hit the grass, he flicked it back up because he knew that he was over. Yaki did absolutely everything he could in cover defence, but the speed and, and the nice little soft hands from Bordeaux, just moving that ball to space. Important kicks they are, he's pulled it around. Can he bring it around? Oh, that is delightful. Skims off the left post and in. And Garcia doing the business. And how about this? 31 points to 28. And a thriller going down here at the Matmut Atlantic Stadium, which will be the venue for the semi-finals of the top Cators in June. Deport here coming off as well. So the bench really going to be tested here for Bordeaux. Oh! 
Charge down, a bit of contact, but they're lucky because Taufa's there. And he's just as big as Ben Tomifuna. Tongan props, of course, to some of the big boys in uh, world rugby. Uh, Aldegaris getting slightly uh, excited, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Any range of adjectives there. Ben Tapuai coming on for Deporte. Leon up against Bordeaux at Gelon next weekend, round 20. Toulouse will take on Poe before they play Racing at home in the last 16 of the Champions Cup. Bordeaux up against Saracens in their last 16 battle as they look towards uh, winning and conquering Europe. See how far they can go this season. Cramon with the line out. Oh, it's wonderfonly won and picks it up nicely done. Boniface as Colas really gets it out. And now they're trying to move, go through the, the phases. Ben Tapuai. Oh, he's got a little bit of a zip about him, hasn't he? Fresh legs always helps the cause. Look who. Good passing. Ben Penno. Penno. Where's he going to go? Well, it's a wild pass. You can't make passes like that. Uberti picks it up and goes the other way. There's Kulashvili. The support arrive. Seven minutes to go. Three points. Separate these two teams. Big high kick. I don't know if that's the right option. On the ground, it should have been. Labelle loves these kind of scenarios. Good hands, Malia. Oh, Dupont, Dupont, Dupont into the hands of Cost. Cost has Aki outside of him. There's the offload, running out of space. Oh, that's a good little bit of a cleaning out the rubbish scenario there. Mofana and Tatafu. Yeah, Dupont did well to completely commit the player that was on him so that he couldn't drift across. He gave Cost a little bit of space. But unfortunately, that last pass, using the sideline as a defender, and Bordeaux were able to clear the danger thanks to a big hit from uh, Moifana. Injured player down for Toulouse. Like I said, the bench really being tested here for Bordeaux. We know about the depth of the Toulouse squad. I mean, being able to bring on a player of this quality after three minutes of the game tonight, Antoine Dupont, not in his preferred position or the world's preferred position for him, but can acquit himself fantastically anywhere. Lineouts slick for UBB. They just poached one as well. Topher is at the back. Uh, yeah, Liz Gorg says, I'll take over. There's my box kick. Who's chasing? Make your mark at the back if you want. And I think LaBelle was guaranteed to do that. Taps it and gets it moving. Shift it out to Dupont. Let him do the magic. He loves this. Look at the acceleration. There's a mismatch. He's gone right through the middle. He's got room at, but look on the right-hand side. Oh, he throws a dummy. Finally gets tackled by Luku. Bit of counter-rucking. Here's Grau getting the ball out. Oh, who's is Cyril Bai? Cyril Bai's oh. passed to Mirfu. He can't do that. Oh, that's a great hit, that is, from the, the Georgian Kolashvili. And uh, Brennan has it. Straightens up. Oh, that's, uh, there were hands on that. That was uh, there for the taking. Taufa needs to get out of there. And Tamak this time. Peter Aki. Boniface with the hit. And Mirfu, they can use the big bodies to just budge their way over and gain meters. Just over five minutes remaining. An opportunity here. There's a charge coming through from that man Dupont once again. Cross this time, makes the ball available. Grau, oh, that's a wild pass. Crowan picks it up, very quick acceleration. He's got his hands on the ball, no, he hasn't. Mirfu this time once again. Well, they're closing in on the try line now. It's there for the take, and the penalty is for Bordeaux. Oh, my word. And I'm just looking to see who that was. I think it's Bouchaton. And a little bit of verbal backlash, and they get an extra 10 metres. How about that? 
Yeah, quite uh, unbelievable to see Toulouse concede that penalty there. They're normally pretty ruthless, pretty lethal when they get close to the line. Just leaving Miafu, who got rocked before by Kalashvili. You don't see many players that can rattle a rampaging Emmanuel Miafu like that. But just enough numbers there on the ball. As you say, Robbie Bocheton was the end guy who got awarded the penalty, but he had his mates there supporting, which was absolutely critical to the outcome. I think uh, they were a bit lucky because Roman Latterad was uh, the tackled player, you know, trying to get himself out of there. Could have been a penalty going the other way. Gee, that was a great run from, uh, that we've just seen from, from Dupont. You know, to find the gap initially and to accelerate. Then he waited for his support. There's the shot from Kalashvili. You don't see that often at all. But Dupont waited for his support to get there, then accelerated again because he knew he need to, needed to get them some, some impetus going forward to run onto it a bit more. Really smart play. Oh, Another one against the throw. His uh, Grau, three and a half minutes to lose. They're trailing by three points, but uh, look, they're coming at them once again. Cost this time. Look who's trying to get his hands on it. Has he got his hands on it? No. It's Grau who has the ball cram on it. Chucked out by Cyril Bai and picked up by Brennan. Brennan, he's good at straightening things up and just making sure that they've got that uh, one-dimensional, you know, uh, charge through the middle, allowing cavalry to arrive from both sides. Grau gets the ball out, of course, if they get a penalty, they can only uh, draw level. Here's Dupont again, surely not, surely not. He's a wild pass out wide, very unlucky there. You see Barassi going crikey, that was so close. It's a line out for Bordeaux. Oh, he packs some punch, doesn't he, Antoine Dupont? I think pound for pound, you'd probably only say Johnny Wilkinson on defence packs a greater punch for his size. Just a shame about the finish there, not quite players in support there. He's a little bit hopeful maybe throwing that past Dupont. Yeah, they got an option for a scrum or a line out, I think. But they're threatening constantly, aren't they? Absolutely relentless in this last 30 odd minutes at least, if not the whole half to lose. Bordeaux escape from this one. They'll be so thankful for that one try they did manage to score in this half, thanks to the, the injection from Pino. Lineouts 14 12, three loss for UBB, two for Toulouse. On this occasion, it's been won by Bocheton and it's straight. Miafu's getting those tentacles in there. You've got to make it safe, you've got to make it your own ball. Les Gorg is there, a little bit of extra support coming in. Definitely needed when you've got giants like Richie Arnold, Miafu, Rumat. I bet they're happy that they've cleared that. That's a pretty good kick, that is from Luku. But look where it is, Malia. God, he's got, he's got an insatiable thirst for um, for running. A little bit high there on Dupont from Mirfano. Uh, Mofana, sorry. So it's going to be a penalty. Now they're going to stick into the corner. They've got to be really careful about these little issues that have just seeped into their game. Well, they are showing the effects a little bit to lose of those counter-attacks running back from deep. Funnily enough, it's... It's Dupont who seems to have the best legs ongoing, you know, to, to keep the stamina. And, and you'd think it'd be hard from having played more sevens where it's a lot more about explosive power, short, sharp bursts, you know, 14 minute games. And that longer grind of 15s rugby, the 80 minute rugby, and he's played, you know, he will have played 77 of it by the end. He's still got plenty of running in him. Yeah, his fitness is like, you know, uh, second to none. I think, you know, Dupont, you can't, He's such a wonderful athlete, of course, and, uh, you know, Sevens Rugby, as we know, is very fast and very challenging. You know, your, your heart definitely knows all about it. It's a penalty. Absolutely. It's just at the same time, it's a slightly different sty style of fitness. It's like maybe doing going from Rugby League to, to Rugby Union. Yeah. No, it's just a... You know, it's more backpedaling in league, come up the 10 metres, go back again. So it's just the, the fitness that you work on is slightly different. So he's done incredibly well, I think, to last. Absolutely, he's fantastic. The speed, the explosive power that he's got. But that's a real tick for him to have been able to last this, this game out. OK, 20 seconds to go. Attacking line out for Toulouse. It's, it's now or never. Get a five-pointer from this, they take the win. Got to win the line out. Cram on. 
Watch out for Rumat. Rumat will be logically there. Oh, that's a battle in the air. And uh, he's picked it out. Brennan's done really, really well. Everybody's got to get in here now because this has got to be won by Tillou. It's like everybody's charging in. You've got uh, Costus at the back. Brute force. If this comes out, anybody can score. But it's not coming out. It's an absolute shambolic mess. And that, if that goes down, there's no one. Oh, it's just uh, it's on the ground. They picked it up. Dupont. Dupont. We've gone past the 80 minute mark. Got to keep it alive. There's Grout. Broken play. Who's going to get it? Bushaton tries to get his hands on it. Toulouse on the attack. Last phase of the game. And they've got to be respectful and uh, they've got to be disciplined here. Tatafu needs to get out of there. Toulouse biding their time, getting the cavalry involved. Tamak. Charges in, doesn't get over the game line. Oh, he just manages to pick it up. The counter rocking. Cost. Oh my word, he could have got absolutely smashed there. Is is Grau? Grau still on his feet? Finally hits the deck. Big hit on into Mac. Dupont. Dupont gets the ball out to Peter Aki. Aki, watch out for the footwork. Toulouse on the attack. Dupont playing scrum half now. On that occasion. Cyril Bai hits the deck. Players rolling out of the tackle. Discipline is key. Miafu. One and a half minutes into past the 80. Oh, it's been tapped away. It's been picked up here. Malia, Malia. They've thrown him out and it's gone out and it's over. Damian Penno has the last word. Such an important hit. Crashing and taking out the player with the ball in his hands. Bordeaux survive in front of 44,000 fans and they take four points in what has been an absolute thriller in the southwest of France. Bordeaux Begler 31, Toulouse 28. My oh my, what a showdown! C'est formidable. Yes, that is playoff rugby. That's ominous signs for other teams. The desolation that we see from the Toulouse players and the jubilation from the Bordeaux players and their crowd. Huge resilience to get out of that, to concede the lead that they had and see Toulouse go back in front, but then stick to their guns, score that crucial try to Bochetong in the second half just to get their noses back in front and then hold out a relentless Toulouse team, wave after wave of attack, physical attack, Attacking wide, probing the gaps. Genius players like this man here, Antoine Dupont. They threw everything at Bordeaux to lose. And you wouldn't have put... You wouldn't have been paying a lot of odds for Toulouse to have come through that like they did at the end. In the top 14 final last year, they know how to win. And they were on the brink of it there. Full marks to Bordeaux for getting through that one. Well, what a match we had. That was just sensational. And, you know, the pendulum, it swung a little bit going into the second half, and we saw just how good Toulouse are. Coming back, fighting back, just chipping away until they got that opening, scoring tries, and, and finding themselves just edging ahead. But, uh, well, scoring that final try has been uh, a blessing there for Union bordeaux Begler because, well, that was... That was a sensational advert, wasn't it, for a top 14? And uh, it's only round 19. Yeah, like I say, I think that the quality of the play, the intensity, the speed of the game really has been up a notch for these premium teams, particularly tonight as they start looking at playoffs, not just in the top 14 eventually, but also in the European competitions. And that was a proper game of rugby. Some aspects that both teams will look at, of course, lineouts. Neither team probably happy with their own lineouts, probably True. pretty happy with their defensive lineouts, but still a little bit to work on there. But just the positivity of both teams, the attacking mindset to keep going and going stands them in good stead as we go to the real business end of the season. Yannick Brew, happy man, of course. He knows all of these guys at Toulouse. And, uh, yeah, full credit to Yannick Brew and what he's done, of course, uh, just to... Uh, enable UBB to, to brandish such fine armory, you know, and bringing such important players, you know, Damian Peno being one of them, of course, you know, he's a star player, isn't he? And, you know, just scoring so many incredible tries for France.